Here's a very warm welcome to all of you in today's session on Revit Architecture, which is a designing software for construction professionals. Autodesk Revit Architecture Certification is an industry recognized credential for people who want to excel in their designing career. Today's session will provide you in-depth details about Revit Architecture online training program at Multisoft. Let's take a look at the agenda first. We'll start with an introduction to Revit Architecture, then know about Autodesk and then move on to the certification details. After this, I will share the course details with you and later move on to the sneak preview section. In this section, I will elaborate on one of the important course concepts to give you an idea about how online training will happen at Multisoft. The next section will be Multisoft Revit Architecture online training where I will give you information about the training deliverables. At the end, I will summarize the session for you. Let's begin with an introduction to Revit Architecture. Revit was developed on the Microsoft Windows platform. It allows architects and other building professionals to create building models by constructing a parametric three-dimensional model that includes both geometric and non-geometric design and construction information. This was later on known as building information modeling. Autodesk Revit Architecture is a modeling software for architects, structural engineers, MEP engineers, designers and contractors. It allows users to create 3D architectural models and access building information from the building's model database. Revit can perform BIM 4D simulation and has tools to plan and track various stages in the building's life cycle that is from concept to construction and finally to demolition. The Revit architecture software can represent the building model in multiple views such as plane, 3D isometric, perspectives and schedules. Moving on to the technology part of Revit architecture, Revit can be used as a powerful collaboration tool between different disciplines in the building design domain. The various object categories referred to as families in Revit terminology can be divided into three groups, system families, loadable families and in-place families. The first one that is system families are pre-made by Autodesk and customization is limited. Loadable families or components can be built from the scratch. And the third category that is in-place families are like loadable families but cannot be saved out of the project in which they are made. Now let me tell you about Autodesk which is a well-known software company and also the owner of Revit Architecture Software. Autodesk is an American multinational software corporation headquartered in California. It was founded in 1982 and provides software for architecture, engineering, construction, media and manufacturing industries. The company is famous for its computer-aided design software. Autodesk software have been used for significant design-based developments including New York Freedom Tower and Tesla electric cars. Let's take a look at the certifications that Autodesk offers for Revit Architecture. For individuals who want to display their knowledge more explicitly, it is a great idea to get certified. The first step towards getting certified from Autodesk is to receive a formal training as that's how you develop foundation level skills. After that, hands-on knowledge and industry experience will lead you to your goal. Autodesk Revit Architecture Certified User and Autodesk Revit Architecture Certified Professional are the two certifications offered by Autodesk. Since you now know what Revit Architecture and Autodesk are, it makes sense that I share the course specific details with you. In terms of job roles associated with Revit Architecture, this technology is majorly used by architects, BIM managers, project managers, draftsmen, Revit engineers, 3D modelers and lead architects. Also, some of the biggest firms in the world like LNT use Revit Architecture for building modeling. In terms of target audience, this course is usually attended by BTEC and architecture students. Those who are already working as architects and project engineers also learn Revit architecture software to increase their professional standing. This slide shows the complete course outline for Revit architecture. When you register with us for the training, we will cover all these modules in detail. 
So it's time for the sneak preview section. I'll cover some important course concepts to give you an understanding of how online training will happen at Multisoft. Today I'm going to tell you about stairs. There are two basic methods of creating stairs within Revit architecture. You can either use the run tool or you can manually define the stair boundaries and the position of the risers. Both these methods require you to be in a plan view while you create your stairs. I'll focus on the stairs by sketch method of stairs creation and show you how to outline the stair boundaries and the riser lines using Revit. Once you understand this method, the use of the run tool is very easy. In order to create a stairs element, you need to tell Revit about three basic things. First one is at what level do the stairs start and end. This can be done simply by picking to the corresponding predefined levels. In majority of cases, these levels will correspond to two edges and finish floor levels one above the other. The second thing is the boundaries of the stairs, that is the sides of the stairs on the left and right as you walk up and down the stairs. The third one is the location of the risers. In most cases, you will probably want the first riser to start at the base of the stair, last riser to be at the top and all other risers to be spaced equally in between. You can do this by spacing each riser differently, but more on that later on. Let's start with an example. I'm going to start with a new Revit project file. I will use the two default levels in the project file as the bottom and top levels for my stairs. Further moving on to the method of creating stairs, you firstly have to switch to a plan view and select the stair tool. Next, as you can see in the figure that the default creation method is set to run, you need to deselect it and select boundary. On selecting it, a choice for standard sketch lines, pick tools, etc. will appear. Now for sketching one side of the stair, you can notice a text underneath the green line. At each stage of the stair creation process, Revit lets us know how many risers we have created and how many we still have to place. But now the question arises as to how Revit decides that this particular stair will have 22 risers and not 34. As we've already mentioned, the bottom and top levels of the stair, Revit uses this information to calculate the height of the stair. It simply divides this distance by the maximum height of an individual riser and then rounds the number to get a whole number of risers. The value for the maximum height of an individual riser is set in the stairs preferences panel. One thing to note down is that we do not need boundaries at the top and bottom of the stairs. Instead, we use riser lines in those locations. Boundaries are only needed on the sides of the stairs. Now in the next step, we will add our risers. For this, switch from the boundary tool to the riser tool by clicking on its icon. First of all, we will make the top and bottom risers by simply drawing the lines at the top and bottom of the stairs. You can see the text below the green line. It mentions that we've created two risers and 20 more are left. So we will now place the rest of the risers into the sketch according to the particular design. There is one quick method to add the risers. Simply copy one riser and make multiple copies of it. On doing so, ensure that the multiple checkbox is ticked for the copy command. After adding the risers, you can check the 3D view of the stair. You will notice that in the 3D view, Revit has automatically added the railings to the side of the stair so that we can have a better idea of how our stair will finally look. You can delete these railings if required. We can also customize the look of the stair, select the stairs and click on properties. You will see a vast array of parameters that can be customized to change the look and composition of the stairs. There is also a calculation rules button near the top of the panel. On clicking this, you will find the rules and formula that Revit uses to create stairs. You can adjust these as per the local building regulations that may apply in the area. The stairs tool is very powerful and there is obviously a lot more to learn about it. You would be exploring in detail about it when you register for the training. So with that, we complete the sneak preview section. I hope you understood the methods I discussed. Let's now gain an insight to how Revit Architecture online training will happen at Multisoft.
when you register with us for the training, we will connect with you as per the pre-decided time and impart training for 18 hours in all. For the exact schedule and each session's duration, you can refer to the training calendar on our website. The training happens through a secure web conferencing tool that allows a real-time learning experience. Once you register with us, we send out event links to you, wherein you log into a collaborative platform that allows two-way interaction between the student and the trainer through webcam and voice chat. It is as good as a classroom, since the whiteboard allows the trainer to transfer knowledge as done in a classroom. The share option lets the experts share files, videos, applications and even desktops. Once you register with us, we provide you 24 by 7 access to an online resource center wherein apart from accessing other training material, you can also attempt 7 lab exercises and 3 certification based mock tests. Apart from these valuable exam oriented resources, you also get access to all related presentations and training videos. This is a sample of the online assessment that will test your knowledge on the various course concepts. All the questions will have four options, out of which you need to select the correct one. At the end of the assessment, you will get the information on the correct answers and reasoning behind the same. Now to summarize the session, this will be an 18 hours instructor-led online training that will be conducted by an experienced instructor. In addition, you will get 24 by 7 access to the learning management system where you can attempt 7 lab assignments and 3 mock tests. After the training, you will also receive a training certificate from Multisoft. This session was an attempt to provide you detailed information about the online Revit architecture training program. In order to register for the course or to ask any question, please write to us at info at multisoftvirtualacademy.com.